What's going on everybody? My name is Zach Marvin and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to create pixel perfect fonts using Unity's new text mesh editor. My channel is designated to tracking my devlog and tracking my progress with my upcoming game Nanoplanets, but in making this game I have a lot of custom fonts and I found out that it's not very easy to get pixel perfect fonts into a text mesh pro without causing distortion or anti-aliasing and there's not very many resources online to show you how to do that in a clear and concise way so i figured i would go ahead and create it another nuance with pixel perfect fonts or any fonts in general is if you're using text mesh editor and you want dual colored fonts it's a kind of a hassle to get it to work but we're going to show you how to get it working today so uh, make sure you stay tuned we'll make sure it's clear and concise and if you have any additional questions let me know in the comments below and i'll be glad to help you get this working in your project. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, as you can see in my project, I have a lot of custom fonts I've already created, but I actually need to add one more custom font, a uh, smaller font, uh, it's a tiny pixel font. And the first thing you're gonna wanna do to get your own custom font is obviously you need to draw it. Uh, you need to open your favorite image editor and draw the font. Um, and that's exactly what I've done here. Uh, as you can see, I have all the characters I think I'm gonna use. Um, if you need foreign characters, you obviously need to draw those in here as well. And I'll probably have to go back and uh, update this font with foreign characters as well. Um, but for now, I've got all uppercase and lowercase in English as well as the numbers and the most common uh, types of uh, special characters. Um, the next thing you're going to want to do in your image editor is you need to make sure every single one of these um, characters is aligned to the very front of the cell. Um, because if you leave some space in front of it, um, smaller letters like I are going to have some uneven spacing in Unity um, and it's just going to kind of look wonky. Uh, Text Mesh Pro and the software we're going to be using to convert the PNG to a TTF does a really good job of chopping the back end off like this extra space behind the I um, but it doesn't do a very good job of chopping the front space off. So make sure you align all your uh, characters to the front of the box and that's going to help you out in the long run. Um, another thing to note is when you're creating your font, your custom font, you'll notice I have a lot of extra space below here. Um, this is for letters like lowercase p, lowercase q, lowercase y, um, all the little letters that have little tails underneath. Um, you need to leave a little extra space under there so you can draw those tails. Uh, so once you've drawn your font and you've got it ready to go, um, I use Asprite, so I'm just going to export, click File, Export, and then I export it to a PNG. And then once you've got that PNG ready, um, you're going to open this website, and I'll leave a link to it in the comments below. Uh, it's a really great tool for converting PNGs to TTFs, and it's the only free online tool that I've ever found that um, doesn't require you to download anything and doesn't cost any money. So I would highly recommend it. Like I said, the link's going to be in the comments below. Um, and then the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to find that file that you just created. Um, I think mine is right here. And you're going to drag that file onto the left side. And now you'll see your custom font right here. Um, and then you're gonna start going through these settings. Uh, the very first thing in these settings is you're gonna type exactly how uh, you want, exactly how you typed it in the PNG. So let's go ahead and do that. And actually, before I do that, I just noticed the J is uh, missing a little pixel right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix that real quick. Okay, so now that I've got that fixed, um, I'm gonna finish typing it out exactly like it is in the PNG. Make sure you use capitalization too. All right, so now I've got it all typed out. Uh, the very next setting you need to manipulate is the glyph color. Um, if you're just doing a single color font, you can just leave it to white or black or whatever you colored your font in. Um, but for me, I'm using a dual colored font that's white and black. So I need it to capture all of that. So I'm using opaque. And then the next thing you want to do is you want to set your tile width and your tile height. Um, usually I set my tile height one larger than the width and that'll create a like default line spacing in there for you. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So my font is one, two, three, four, five, six wide and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven high. So, and then we're going to add one to the height. Actually it's, nine high because the little tails for p q y and whatnot so we'll do 10 high for the height and then what did we say we said six right one two three four five six okay um let's make sure even like the m's and w's are still six nope m's and w's are seven so my tile width needs to be seven 
and then you're going to set all these offsets to zero, 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 zero. And then this baseline, this is how many pixels tall your characters are that don't have the little tail. So uh, it'll be seven for mine. Um, and as you notice, things aren't looking right over here. So I must have, oh, yep, I forgot the X. Let's see, does that fix it? The quick brown, and you can't really read it because mine's a dual colored font, um, but it does look like something's being messed up. No, is that the W, how the W should look? Something's being cut off, so I, I need to adjust my height. There we go. So now the font's coming through. Let's make sure the, the P's have their little tails. Um, okay, so disregard what I said about making it one taller than the actual height of the font. Just use the actual height of the font that you drew. Um, and then, yeah, you set all these to zero, you set your baseline. I like the spacing to be one. Um, you can also do mono spacing, but I, I prefer how it looks without the mono spacing. And then the next thing you wanna do is select the meta tab, and this is where you're gonna name your font. So I'm gonna name it Nano Planet, that's the name of my game, and then Tiny Font. And then you can put use the author and any copyright or license you wanna do, but for now, I'm just gonna leave it. Next thing you wanna do is you wanna save that. Okay, so I've saved it. And then you want to open up your Unity file. Um, and for this tutorial, I created a blank scene. Um, next, you want to right click in your scene hierarchy and you want to add a UI text text mesh pro. And then we'll just say sample text. Now, if you haven't already added text mesh pro, you're going to get a little prompt to install the package. Um, and if you don't know if you've already installed the package, you can just click window package manager, packages in project. And then as you can see, I've already installed text mesh pro. Um, if you haven't installed it and you didn't get that prompt, you'll just go to unity registry and then scroll down and you should see it right there. And then you'll click download and install and then you'll have text mesh pro in your project. So now we have this object in our scene that has a text mesh pro component on it. And as you can see, it is using the default font asset for text mesh pros and we want to create our own. So we're going to go ahead and drag in our TTF that was just created from that website. Let me drag that in. So that's my TTF file that I created from the website. Um, and then you're going to click on it and you're going to change the font size to whatever the, however many pixels your font was. So mine was seven. And then you're going to change the rendering mode to hinted, and then you're gonna change it to custom set. And you're gonna do the same thing you did in that website, and you're gonna type out exactly the amount of characters that you had. So let me go ahead and do that here. I can actually just copy and paste it from this website and apply. Okay, so we have your custom character set right there. And then the next thing you need to do is make sure that you didn't drag your TTF file into the Text Mesh Pro fonts folder. So when you install the text mesh pro, uh, package, it creates a font folder for you right here with the default font. Make sure you're not editing within this fonts folder. You want to be in your own fonts folder because when you update text mesh pro package, uh, it's going to delete everything in this folder and then reinstall it from unity. And you're going to lose anything custom that you did. So make sure you're using your own fonts folder. As you can see, I have a fonts folder here. And then for this specific font, I have another subfolder for that. Um, so now we've created that. We have our TTF in here with the right import settings. Uh, the next thing we need to do is create a font asset for, for the Text Mesh Pro component. And the way you're going to do that is you're going to click Window, and then you're going to go to Text Mesh Pro, Font Asset Creator, and then under the Source Font File, you're going to select the font that you created. So mine is Tiny Font, and then you're going to set the size of it again. And then the padding, this is how many pixels in between each letter you want. Um, for my tiny font, I think one will be good. Packing method, fast or optimum will work. Optimum just makes it in a smaller sprite sheet. It just takes a little longer to pack it. Um, but I'll go ahead and use optimum. And then atlas resolution, you want this to be the smallest pop possible size that will fit all of your font assets in it. And a good way to figure this out is to open up your image editor. You can look at your overall image size, which in a sprite, it's right here. So 63 by 81. So I need at least 81. 
So 128 would be perfect for this. And then you want to do ASCI for the uh, character set, unless you're using foreign letters, then you could do extended, or if you're only using lowercase or uppercase, like I am in some of my other fonts, you can do it there. Um, and then it lets me generate it. So now you have it um, right here in this little image preview, and you're going to click save. You're going to save that in your fonts folder, your fonts folder, not the text mesh pro fonts folder. And then you're going to go down here and you're going to click on that asset that you just created. And then you're going to click the little ellipse right here. There's two of them. Make sure you click the right ellipse and then click extract Atlas. Now this creates a PNG file from that font asset. So now you need to open your image editor and then open that Atlas that was just created. So I'm going to get to mine, which is right here. It's in the fonts folder in your unity project. Okay. So now you have this. And this is the part that can be a little tedious. Basically what you have to do, oops, let me drag that to the right side. It's a little easier to work with. What you have to do is you have to redrag every character onto it over here. Um, this can be very tedious. If you know of a faster way um, to drag these over or to make it create this Atlas in the same shape that it, you created the original PNG in, please let me know in the comments below. Um, but for now, this is the only way I know of doing it. So this part can take a little bit of time. So we're going to go ahead and do a time lapse. All right. So that was super time consuming. So if you know a faster way to do that part, please let me know. Um, but remember, if you have a dual colored font, you need to do that. But if you only have one color in your font, you don't even have to do that part because it's already going to import in the right way. Uh, that's just to get your dual colors back in there or any other special effects you want to do. Um, but now that we've done that and we've adjusted that atlas, we need to add that atlas back into our font asset. So you're going to expand your blue font asset. You're going to click the little globe and then this is going to actually be collapsed and you're going to click to expand. And then you see your little font, at, font atlas right there. You need to update it with the one you just created. So you drag it over and now it's in there. And then another thing you need to do is click on that custom font atlas and change these import settings. So the pixels per unit is going to be whatever your game is in. So my game is in 16 pixels per unit. Uh, the filter mode is going to be point. The compression is going to be none. Then you click apply. And then now you should be able to go into your text mesh pro and then you'll be able to change the default font asset to the one you just created, which is right there. Um, and then, oh, one, one other piece. So where is it? Right here under your little globe, you need to change the shader type to text mesh pro bitmap custom Atlas. And you're going to see that the white portion on the screen, it's all white right now. But once I update this shader, it'll be white and black. And there you go. So let's go ahead and type some stuff. So a couple of things to note is um, when I was creating this font, there were some issues when I was dragging everything to the far left side. Like as you can see right here, my text should have been like that. I had to correct that. Um, and then there was another one in here. I think my J was messed up or there's another character. And as you can see right here, even though I typed an N, an M is showing up. M my M is swapped with a W. So uh, let's go ahead and go back and fix that real quick. So let's go to the N. Delete that one. Paste it back in there. And then we're going to replace this W with a capital M. I was confused on that part. You're kind of playing like a little puzzle game trying to fit the spots into the correct little shapes and it gets a little confusing. But the cool thing about this is if you have little mess ups like that, you can just open this Atlas back up, go in there and fix it real quick. And then now look, we got the proper N and the proper M. So you could say, hello world. And then this is, this is your new text mesh pro font. So uh, it's kind of finicky and 
I actually originally in a prototype built an entire custom font solution because I couldn't get Text Mesh Pro to work with my Pixel Perfect font without stretching it or distorting it. And it took me an entire weekend of playing around with this to get these settings just right. So I figured it'd be a good idea uh, to go ahead and post a tutorial video so that if you're experiencing the same issue with Text Mesh Pro, you'll know how to create a Pixel Perfect font and a two colored Pixel Perfect font which that was where a lot of my big issues were, is I wanted that black outline in my font, and I couldn't figure out the proper way to do that using Unity's Text Mesh Pro editor or component. Um, but luckily, I finally got it figured out, so I decided to make this video. If you like this video and you want more tutorials on upcoming Unity features or new features or uh, just how to create games in general, please let me know. Otherwise, make sure you subscribe to my channel to follow my upcoming game, Nano Planet. Uh, this channel is dedicated to posting devlogs about that. I'll actually be posting another devlog here shortly. Um, so make sure you hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. Let me know if there's anything else I could have done differently in this tutorial in the comments below. Uh, and I appreciate your support. It really helps me greatly. Um, and until the next video, y'all have a great day.